All right, in this video, we're going to be working on Griffith's quantum mechanics problem 3.14, proving various commutator identities. All credit for this problem goes to David Griffiths. As a quick disclaimer, be sure to try this problem out before watching this video. This video is intended to help you learn, not intended for you to copy down the answer. Let's get started. So part A is broken up into really two parts, and there's two proofs that we want to do. So the first commutator identity that we're going to want to prove here is the following that you can see on the screen. And we're going to start by examining the left-hand side. Now with the left-hand side, we can just simply expand that out. And so we're going to see that A hat plus B hat c hat is equal to uh, a hat plus b hat c hat minus c hat a hat plus b hat and we can further expand that out one more time and get a hat c hat plus b hat c hat minus c hat a hat minus c hat b hat all right now let's examine the right hand side because we can't simplify this any further Uh, for that, we're going to see that uh, a hat, c hat, oh, whoops, that's a bracket. And that's going to equal a hat, c hat, minus c hat, a hat, plus b hat, c hat minus c hat b hat let's rearrange this and we're going to get an a hat c hat plus b hat c hat minus c hat a hat minus c hat b hat and as you can see this guy equals this guy. So we've proven uh, both of these. Awesome. Let's move on to the second part of part A. This is the second identity that we're trying to prove for uh, part A. And we're going to take pretty much the same exact approach. Let's examine the left-hand side of this. And when we do that, we're going to get pretty simply A hat, B hat, C hat, minus c hat a hat b hat that's pretty straightforward now the right hand side is a little bit more uh work but we can do it let's go to the right hand side and with that we're going to uh we're going to end up getting uh a hat b hat c hat minus c hat b hat plus a hat c hat minus c hat a hat b hat and then we can expand that out further and we're going to get a hat b hat c hat minus a hat c hat b hat plus a hat b uh i'm sorry c hat b hat minus c hat a hat b hat and you can see that these two here are uh one's negative one's positive and so those just pretty easily cancel out and we're left with a hat b hat c hat minus c hat 
a hat b hat and that equals uh oh boy we can see that these are equivalent so this one is verified now moving on to part b we have uh the momentum operator in here and then we have x to the n and we want to show uh the following and what we're going to do is we're going to use p hat is equal to a minus i h bar partial uh partial x just assume it to be one dimensional so in reality uh this could just be a normal derivative but it doesn't really matter we're going to leave it partial because why not um and because we have this derivative, we're going to need to work with uh, a function because we can't just apply the derivative to nothing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this right here, uh, what we're given, uh, x to the n uh, and p hat, and we're going to apply it to some arbitrary function f. It can be, it's going to be f of x, but we're just going to call it f. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to expand this out. Okay, and when we do that, we're going to get x to the n minus i h bar partial partial x plus i h bar partial partial x x to the n and all that's being applied to our arbitrary function f. Okay, now let's uh, bring the f in and, and multiply that in. So we're going to get uh, x to the n times uh, negative i h bar partial f partial x plus i h bar partial partial x x to the n f. And what you can see here with this is that we're going to have to apply product rule here. So let's apply our product rule and expand things out. So with this, we're going to get minus i h bar x to the n partial f partial x plus i h bar n x to the n minus 1 f plus i h bar x to the n partial f partial x. And if you notice, this guy and this guy are, po are positive and negative. So they pretty easily cancel out. And we're left with i h bar n x to the n minus 1 f. We can just simply divide out uh, an f from either side to get that x to the n p hat is equal to i h bar n x to the n minus 1. Looks good. So part b is now uh, proven. Now part c, we're dealing with the momentum operator again, so we're going to use the same form of the momentum operator that we used before, so you can, the minus i h bar partial partial x. And we want to show uh, the following here, and we're going to end up uh, taking a similar approach, but you can see here we have an arbitrary function f of x. And um, what we're going to need to do, though, to uh, you know do the commutation is we're going to need to apply another arbitrary function. So what we're going to be doing here is let's take this and we're going to go f of x uh, p hat and we're going to apply this to uh, some arbitrary function g. It's going to really be g of x again but for simplicity's sake we're just going to call it g. I don't want to write anymore. Save some space. Um, and then what we're going to do so let's expand this out. We're going to get f p hat minus p hat f all applied on g we can expand this out a little bit let's expand it we're gonna get minus i h bar f partial g partial x <laughs> then we're gonna get plus i h bar 
partial partial x f g now again just like in the previous uh, part for part b we're going to need to apply product rule to this when doing this derivative so let's do that when we do that we're going to get minus i h bar f partial g partial x plus i h bar partial f partial x g plus i h bar f partial g partial x you can see negative positive those cancel out pretty simply we're left with i h bar partial f partial x g divide the g out and you're left with this guy pretty straightforward again now part d is probably the trickiest and uh Part of the reason why it's the trickiest is because now we're dealing with the Hamiltonian operator and raising and lowering operators. And we want to show the following, and the plus and minus here is kind of weird and kind of tricky. So uh, we're going to assume two different cases. We're going to assume a raising operator, and then we're going to assume a lowering operator. Okay, so uh, let's start with the raising operator, where we have h hat and a hat plus okay well we can expand this out and we're gonna get h bar omega uh, a hat minus a hat plus minus one half a hat plus minus a hat plus, a hat minus, a hat plus, minus one half, and that's what we get. Now we can simplify this down, so let's do that. We're going to get h bar omega, a hat minus, a hat plus, minus a hat plus a hat minus all by a hat plus now you can clearly see that this is a commutation right here so we can write it as such and simplify that further so we're gonna get h bar omega a hat minus a hat plus a hat plus now this we know from an identity in the book is just one. Uh, the opposite, so if it was a hat plus, a hat minus, it would be negative one. But we know that that's just one. And so we can simplify this down. So it's just h bar omega a hat plus. Okay, now let's do this for the lowering operator case. So for the lowering operator case, we're gonna have our Hamiltonian operator, our lowering operator, we're going to commute those. Well, let's take the same approach. Okay, and let's simplify it now. Again, we can notice this is just a commutation, so we can write it as such. And again, we know that this is now negative 1, since it's plus minus. And so this becomes minus h bar omega a hat minus. So at the end of the day, everything sort of checks out, because we have a minus h bar omega a hat minus, or a lowering operator, and then an h bar, positive h bar omega, and the raising operator. So we can therefore say uh, that h hat or a Hamiltonian operator, a hat plus minus is equal to plus or minus h bar omega a hat 
plus or minus, and we know that these are going to have the same form. So if they were flipped or something, we'd have plus, minus, minus, plus. But in this case, we've proven that a lowering operator gets the minus sign, a raising operator gets the plus sign. So, um, you know, they correspond directly to one another. So uh, everything checks out. That is Griffith's problem 3.14. Hopefully I was able to help you out. And if you liked this video, feel free to let me know that by liking the video. And hopefully I will see you again next time. Thank you very much.